Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Joy Taylor. We've got a packed show today. Skip, Shannon, let's get to it. Welcome to Undisputed. We're live from Los Angeles. I'm Joy Taylor, here with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Good morning, guys. Good morning, Joy. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm surprised you're here. I mean, I got back in time. I mean, it was an early game yesterday, I Brooklyn. I thought they had a parade today. Yes, no, no, no. Didn't they schedule it? No, no. I got back in time. It was a 1 o'clock game yesterday, but, so I was able to make it back in time. you the parade master, right? Not, not yet. Huh? It's coming, though. Oh, it's coming. Yeah. It looks like it is. I think Don't do that, Skip. <laughs> but she was in attendance, but mm-hmm. LeBron was sick, and oh. he didn't want to get her sick. Oh. Yeah. LeBron but she was there sick. yesterday, Joy. You it's, saw It's triple double. With the more oh. blood bottom shoes on, mm-hmm. making me sick. Huh. Love that woman. I'll save it for when you go. (laughs) (laughs) How you doing, bro? Let's do that. Jason Terry of the Milwaukee Bucks will be live in studio with us later in the show. But let's start with a busy weekend in the NBA. Two of the top teams in the league are dealing with major injuries to their superstars. Kyrie Irving had a procedure on his left knee on Saturday and will be out three to six weeks. Out west, Steph Curry came back Friday after missing six games with a right ankle injury. But his return lasted just 25 minutes and he sprained his MCL. He will be reevaluated in three weeks, and Steve Kerr said there's no way he's playing in the first round of the playoffs. But LeBron James is healthy and continues to dominate. The Cavs beat the Nets yesterday, led by LeBron's 37 points, 10 rebounds, and 8 assists. That's five straight wins for the Cavs, and LeBron apparently did all this on a lack of sleep. Let's take a listen. A lot of your work was done at the rim. What does that take out of you, and then to have the energy left to knock that three down? (laughs) Um... I don't know how I came away with the energy because I only got like three hours of sleep last night. Um, kind of been a little bit under the weather and I w- just couldn't sleep last night. And with the early game, it kind of messed my routine up this morning. But if I'm going to be active, I have to be active, you know, for my teammates. And I was able to do that, put together a pretty good game for us to help us uh, keep the streak going. Shannon, after the injuries what? to Kyrie and Steph. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's, got a little, he's got a little cold, a little sick. Under the weather. Yeah, you well, poor man. Key. How much easier is LeBron's path to a title now? LeBron path is what it all is what it's always been. And this is the this is the dilemma that LeBron always faces. If he gets to the finals, the East is weak. If he beats them, oh Steph is injured. Okay. Nobody said no one gave him a pass hmm. for losing to the uh, Golden State Warriors, minus Kevin Love, minus Kyrie. Okay, KD, now you about to see what it's like. But you're going to get you're going to get a uh, 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 clay back. You're going to get Draymond back. It would have been very, very interesting to see hmm. if Swaggy P is your second best player hmm. or Sean Livingston is your third, be- second or third best player. Hmm. How far they actually go? Hmm. That would be very interesting to Wait, see. Wait, are you talking about that first finals against Golden State when LeBron was up two games to one in his house? Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. He's the best player on the planet. Yeah, what happened? Yeah, he is. But no one, but no one has said uh, Golden State path is easy. Nobody said, oh, go to State Pass is easy because they lost those two guys, did they? Mm. Oh, but now LeBron. Hold on, Skip. It's, the, it's still the regular season. Oh. Now, if it was game, if it was the second round of the playoffs and Steph had this injury, mm. if it was second round of the playoffs mm. and Kyrie had this injury, now come talk to me. Mm. You and I both know those guys will be back by the time the second round of the playoffs start. Well, what about the first round? Oh, uh, whoa, 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 hold on. Well, what about it? You right got, now, it would, be, it would be the Utah Jazz. You got KD. Are you sure? You got KD. You sure he's going to be back? I'm not sure. Is, KD, wait, is, is that Clay guy going to be back? Whoa, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Clay's got a fractured thumb. Oh, this is what we know. Oh. Even when LeBron didn't have Kyrie, mm-hmm. even when he didn't have Kevin Love, mm-hmm. and he didn't have D. Wade and Chris Bosh, we know LeBron James has never, ever mm. failed to get out of the first round. Mm. So I don't want to hear about who Kevin Durant But Grant he's does. been playing in the Eastern. Whoa. Yeah. Slow down. Yes, I Nelly. Chomp, Go, I Nelly. Go. Yeah, I, know, yeah. I know you don't like what you've been seeing. Mm. I know it's bothering you. It doesn't bother, it bother me. It's, you. It is what it is. That he's 30.5, 10, mm. and 10. I know that bothers you, Skip. It annoys a lot of people at year 15. Ever since we went to Wakanda, we got on that vibranium. Yeah. I, I wonder. Do no, they, wait, stop do, wondering. Wait, do they test for vibranium? Yeah. I, I just wonder. No. I think the NBA, I think, Commissioner, we need to test for vibranium starting now. It's bountiful, bountiful. where we come from. Really? Yeah. But he's the only one who has That's it. That's right. And yeah. I ain't telling nobody where we get it from. Maybe they do test for vibranium, but they withhold the results of LeBron's test. The, oh, <laughs> Maybe, you, yeah. Yeah, what you trying to imply, Skip? I, I, you started it. I don't want to imply. I yeah. said we own that vibranium. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well. 
I know it's upsetting, Skip. Does LeBron have the number? Yeah, he got it. And you, just, he put Joe Harris, <laughs> chalked him up. Shannon's just very excited to quote about the movie because he took him a month to go see. He it. finally saw it. You know yeah. what? Way to go. I'm trying to figure out why are these guys trying to jump in these body bags when you see LeBron turn the corner. Hmm. Skip, get out the way. It's not worth it. Wait, are we talking about the same Joe Harris who scored 30 points on the Cavaliers, many of them on LeBron James? Oh, uh, we talking about that, that guy? We talking about that Joe Harris that got that body bag. Oh, got up with the, Nurkic. The ex Cavalier Joe Harris? Yeah. Who's bounced around and scored. Is that right? My box score says he scored 30 points. He did have 30. Oh, me, he made me. 11 out of 14 shots, often guarded by oh, LeBron James. Uh, you got to, oh, you got to, the same uh, stat sheet I got? Yeah. Oh, it says 121. Some team had 121, the other had 114. Oh. Which one had 121? So Joe, Joe Harris' stats are obsolete. Skip Bayless, back to the original mm. point. Has LeBron James' path gotten any easier? LeBron James was coming out the East mm. regardless. Because, mm. see, this is what you were going to do. He comes out of the East. Oh, they didn't have Gordon, Gordon Hayward. Kyrie's nicked. He beat Nicked? He just had surgery. No, 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 no. Nicked? They say minor. That's what they say. Right, it's, it's an arthroscopic surgery. I'm just gonna, skip, it's I, a procedure. Skip. You I'm have not, to stick the little thing in the knee, you I, know? I, look, yeah. I'm not Dr. Neil Ellen okay. Trotter. Yeah. I'm not Frank Job. I'm not mm. the, uh, Dr. Andrews. So I'm just going by what's being reported. Three to six weeks oh, now? Okay. Now, Game be, over for they Boston. They beat the Heat. You're going to say, well, they didn't have Deion Waiters. Well, they oh, don't. They, uh, Oh, if he beats the 76ers, that's a young team. Joel Embiid is just a baby. Ben Simmons can't. Yeah, but you told me Friday Philly is not near ready to deal with LeBron in the postseason. I'm just telling you what you're going to say mm -hmm. when LeBron comes up mm -hmm. out of the East. And then. I'm going to say that's what was supposed to happen. Exactly. And yeah. then when he doesn't, what you're going to say? He choked. See, he can't win. Oh. A dilemma. Well, well how is he going to choke in the East? Merriam-Webster defined oh. dilemma as two equally perplexing situations. Did you just look that up? No, I knew it. Mm. I knew it. I've been wanting to say that for a long time. Mm. And that's what LeBron has always been up against, Skip. Mm. If he does, he was supposed to. If he doesn't, he choked. When has he ever choked? Uh, let's see. One, two, three. Anyway, I won't start there. But... Here's what's happened, and you don't want to hear this because it just heaps pressure on your man and expectation, and you know what happens when pressure and expectation get too great for that man. You get LeBron James. You get the 2011 finals against the Dallas Mavericks. But the problem here is that the injury gods have decreed, let there be LeBron James. The injury gods have said, LeBron, we have cleared your path to a fourth ring, now take advantage of the path we have cleared. Because I have never seen anything quite like this, because if Golden State had just lost Steph Curry for a while, maybe for a round of the playoffs, that would be one thing. But all four All-Stars are currently hurt and not available. So all you're going to have to go back to March the 8th to find when all four All-Stars played with each other. And now you're going to have to fast forward to into the second round of the playoffs which will be the first time they have played together in a month and whatever that is, almost a half. What about all last year? Does that count? What about all last year? They played together. Okay, so? I, I'm just trying to figure out. You're talking about where they won't have them. If they start the second round, they will not have played together since March. Mm -hmm. But what about all the 20, what about all the 2017 when they played together? 2016 they played together. Well, that was last year. Exactly. Was a long time So ago. it shouldn't be that hard to pick right back up where you're Really? Left off. Yeah. When you're going to probably need a preseason before the postseason, which you're not going to get, obviously, it, it's very difficult to throw the guys back together after they've missed six weeks apart from each other. That's and it wasn't just one missing, it's all of them missing. That's what they're doing in Cleveland. And do, you, do you think, what do you mean? They're throwing this all together. Oh. Kevin Love's been oh, out, they're right on time. And, the and, new trade. And, you know that's not the team we started with, Skip. Okay, you realize there was one serious threat to your Cavaliers in the Eastern Conference, and that was Kyrie's team. And Kyrie just had arthroscopic surgery that could easily cost him the first round of the playoffs. And he lost his other all-star that he went there to be with, Gordon Hayward. And now Marcus Smart is iffy at best going into the postseason because he's got a broken thumb or, you know, a ruptured tendon in his thumb. And they lost Daniel Tice, and Jalen Brown just came back last night from injury. But the point is, if you don't have Gordon Hayward and you don't have Kyrie and he's not right, 
because you never know how you're going to come out of arthroscopic surgery. It can be real quick or it can be real long. I saw Russell Westbrook when I thought he would bounce right back from arthroscopic, and they quickly ruled him completely out for the whole playoffs. So it's possible Kyrie will not be able to well, play. They, well, the thing was is that they erred on the side of caution, and mm -hmm. I think that's probably what they're going to do with Kyrie. Probably. They will err on the side of caution because this guy's in your future long term. You don't want this lingering long term. The question you have to ask yourself, what are our realistic chances of winning an NBA title this year? Do I risk that mm. and have Kyrie have this lingering knee problems mm. moving forward in 18, 19, 20? Or do I say, well, Kyrie, bro, I need you to get this 100% healthy mm. because you already know. Mm. You see, my, man, that's a broad J skip. I, I don't know what to say, Skip. Mm. I'm running out of words. Aren't you running out of words? I noticed you didn't tweet a whole lot yesterday. What's going on, Skip? I did tweet. At the end of the game, I tweeted twice. What did you tweet? It was the Brooklyn Nets. Do you realize the Nets are now two games from the bottom of the Eastern Conference? I'm hoping they are get you to the bottom. gloating about that? I'm hoping they well, get you to the bottom. I know you are. Uh, obviously, everybody but, in hold Cleveland on. is. Is this the same Brooklyn Nets that the Toronto Raptors had to go to the final 30 seconds of the ball game to win? I wrote off Toronto last week in the oh. middle of the week after the Raptors came up small against, oh. once again, what do you call them, the baby dinosaurs? Uh -huh. I said, get them out of my sight. I said it last week. You, so why, why would you say, is this the same Raptors? Yes, it's the same Raptors. Well, yes, you're making my case for me. Thank you very much. Oh, no. They're ridiculous. This, they're, they're, they, they got no shot. Their two stars are, are merely stars. They're not superstars. When the beast of the East steps on the floor, those two guys really shrink. Skip, this was this this been wrote this script was wrote years ago. Mm, mm. This I think this script goes so, back so to 1984. Look, you can you can look past Boston now. You already wrote you know we've we both written off Toronto and you wrote off the 76ers. You said they're just too young to even have any chance. No, right? they got a great team. I, I mean, I mean they got great players. I love Joel Embiid. Mm. You, now, now you're trying to no 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 boost them back no, up. No 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 no. No, no, no. I, I've but you said, wrote them off last week. No, yeah. you dismissed them. Uh, you no. did. All I said was, when we were making the, we were talking about Paul Pierce's comments about the Sixers. If they mm. met the, uh, if they met the Cavaliers, mm -hmm. they could take them down. Joel Embiid is a monster. If he gives you 30-20, you got an excellent chance because they don't have anybody that can mm. guard Joel Embiid. But if <sighs> you give me a choice. Mm -hmm. You say, okay, you got Joel Embiid, mm. or you got 6'9", 255 Shannon, pounds. Shannon, the East has turned into a joke. No, it's over. That's what LeBron did. Just call it off. They LeBron didn't need did to that. play the playoffs. LeBron did that. No, the injury gods did it no, to Boston. That's no. what happened. The, well, okay, where were the injury gods last year? Or the year before matter. that? We're talking about this year. Exactly. Yeah. And so, so in the West, look what the injury gods have decreed. Let there not be Golden State. And how about the Houston Rockets? with two guys none of us trust in the postseason. Every time we bring up Houston, you say, I just can't buy into James Harden and Chris Paul III in the postseason, right? Yeah. Because I don't buy into them. And now my Spurs have a really good team without the star of the team no, who has crumbled under the pressure to be the leader and to live up being, to being an MVP candidate, and he has checked out on you, the San Antonio Hold on, Spurs. how you talking about Checked out. Y'all just caught the L yesterday yeah. from Milwaukee, yeah, a did. team that we beat the brakes off of. No, I know. Well, and you what, it, and what you, it's come to. Yeah, and Kawhi We gutsed got, it up. We, we had the game of the year. The best regular season game I saw all year long was played Friday night at San Antonio, and it went to overtime. And that Utah team is really good. Yeah. And I tweeted this, and many, many people responded because I got lots of volume off this tweet. And I said, if Utah were in the East, Utah would be in the NBA Finals. That's how good Utah is because Utah is better than Cleveland, but Utah is stuck in the Western Conference playoffs. Yeah. And they're, they might Let get... Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. When Dennis Schroeder dropped 46 on them, did you tweet that? And the Atlanta Hawks, who's the bottom feeder in the East, mm. had went to the, went to Utah mm. and beat the brakes off them. Mm. What did you tweet about that? Utah Atlanta Jazz have the, now won 23 of 27 games. And Donovan Mitchell, I told you, you tried to say Jokic is better than Donovan Mitchell, which is the biggest yoke you've ever told on this show. He is. Oh, Listen, Donovan Mitchell is for real. He's a good player. He, oh, no, he's not just a good player. He's going to be a superstar in this and, league. And they're doing all this and talk. he played the game of the year against my Spurs. My Spurs gutsed it up and gutsed it out in overtime and won their sixth straight game and then had to turn around and go to Milwaukee. And they laid a big egg in the first quarter and the third quarter. They, they were just out of gas. So they're shot. They're out. See you later. No, no, no threat. They would be a big threat to your Cavaliers if they got to the finals. 
They got the kryptonite. Can we stop doing this? LeBron James wins. It's always a reason why we mm. try to diminish why he won. Well, the injury. The, oh, well, they went seven. Well, Steph. It, well, Draymond got suspended. These if are Draymond facts. Draymond got suspended. These are facts. Oh, well, this Steph happened. was a little under the weather. Mm. That, oh, I don't want to hear that, Skip. Mm. They don't, hold on. Imagine, you, you know, speaking of under the weather, that's what I don't want to hear from LeBron James after a game at Brooklyn. He was sick. And, and he d tells Allie Clifton right after the game, I was under the weather and I couldn't sleep. I only slept for three Didn't hours. sleep a week. You're trying to embellish a game at Brooklyn? No. You're, you're trying to create sympathy for yourself at Brooklyn? This is what – You want him to lie? It's the, he's the biggest self-promoter in the what, history of basketball. We this ask, is the guy. We ask, Joy, we ask our athletes to be honest mm. and not just give us – uh, uh, t coaches feel, oh, don't give us that Tom Brady. Oh, gee whiz, golly gee, guys. We want excuses. And Tom, give and, us excuses. And, and LeBron said, guys, I don't know how I summoned yeah. <coughs> yeah. I don't know how I summoned uh, it up. That's what he sounded oh, like. Oh, they got three hours, <coughs> three hours of sleep last night. <laughs> Alan, but I came out. Alan, and, I don't know how I did it today. Yeah. And against put, the Brooklyn Nets. And he put Joe <laughs> Harris. The Brooklyn Nets the play Brooklyn hard. Brooklyn Nets? They play hard. Oh, yeah, they play hard. And they, they got nothing. They but, got nothing. Oh, no, I mean, look. look really? Look at, but everybody, look, I mean, look at these numbers. DeMar Carroll had 18. Holland mm. Jefferson had 15. Mozgov, DNP coach's decision. Jaleel and Okafor, DNP coach's decision. And DeAngelo LeBron Russell. had a super highway to the basket yesterday. And you know what I love about his game lately? He's actually starting to take my advice and attack the basket. You know what I like about his game? You know what I yeah. like about his game lately? The officials are starting to call yeah. a foul when he get hit upside his head. Yeah. Finally. Mm. Bully ball. LeBron, nobody can play bully right. ball better than LeBron, especially against these Eastern Conference bottom feeders like the Brooklyn Nets. You would, and then yesterday, all you need is love. Is he not back? Yeah, love Woo! is in the air. Look at this. 20 points and 15 rebounds, and he led both teams at plus 17 and plus minus. That's pretty great. Yeah. But the other number that just jumps off the page to me, Joy, guess who led all players on the floor in minutes played yesterday? The sick boy, LeBron yeah, James. He should have stayed home with no, Mama. Hold on, what, he should have stayed home with you Mama. Know what, you know what happened? Is that we played Phoenix on on Friday night, yep. and we were able to take the fourth quarter off. Uh. So we knew we have to have something in the tank. So that's what we he did. Played 38 minutes. He played 28 on on Friday. Joy, guess who leads the entire NBA in minutes played? Mm. LeBron. The entire NBA, what is he doing? The injury gods are saying, here, LeBron, no. we have cleared your path. And he says, I got to play 38. Nobody had a problem when Michael Jordan was playing all these minutes at the very same age that LeBron. Nobody said when he was playing 38 minutes, when Kobe Bryant was playing 38 minutes, when Allen Iverson was playing all these minutes. Nobody said a word. Now they have a problem. Oh, now he's Bennett, stat chasing. He leads the league in minutes played. Just, in his, wait a second. In his 15th season. Well, let me ask you a question. 15th Michael season? Jordan never oh. led the league in score. I mean, in minutes played. I, I don't care. This is LeBron in his 15th season. Okay, well, you have to go back. So you look at it as age. Look at Michael Jordan when he was the age of 33. You can't look at it mm. in years because My Michael Jordan was not the player that LeBron is mm. at 18, so mm. he had to go to school. Mm -hmm. LeBron was too good. LeBron was, so, you know, Skip, like when you're like really smart, they skip your grade. Like you, you're supposed to be in kindergarten, they put you in first grade or second grade. He been too good. Mm. They say, we want you to skip college and go straight. Okay, I'll buy that. Okay. He was ready to play pro yeah. basketball at Sacramento on opening night yes. of his rookie year. It ain't look back. But now it's his 15th year, and he has played in all 73 games this year, which is commendable. That's He's played all the back-to-backs. That one night at Memphis, Memphis is just a disaster. Remember, he played the Friday night back-to-back -back at Memphis and sucked it up and put up big numbers. I'm good with that yeah. because the Memphis people deserve to see LeBron. Yeah. So they got two back-to-backs left. Brooklyn got, deserved to see him. They too. got at Miami, at Charlotte coming up here pretty soon. Then they got Washington at Philly to close. So they're back-to-backs. If Greg Popovich were the coach of this team, do you think LeBron would play in either of those second games? Greg Popovich no. got bigger fish on his hand to fry than LeBron James. I'm just he saying. He better worry about Kawhi. I'm just saying LeBron has often said, boy, I wish I could play for Coach Pop and his method of resting stars. And then the next thing I see is that Coach LeBron is not taking LeBron out of the game. No, he shouldn't. We're going to play oh. all 82. Okay. Skip, I remember my That would be the first time, by the way, in his whole career. Yeah. He played all 82 games. Like, right before he left, I think he played an 81 game. Skip, you know my grandmother was in us seven. And my mm. grandma was still in the cook kitchen cooking. And they say, Mary, why are you in that kitchen cooking? Uh. She said, because I can.
Uh. LeBron James, why you playing all these minutes? Because mm. he can. And mm. y'all enjoy it. Because I'm telling y'all, in five years, we going to be gone in the blink of an eye. <laughs> Mm. It happens fast, Skip Bayless. You know, time is the one thing you can never, ever recapture. So if you lose money, you can make some of that so up. So when LeBron retires, you're going to retire also? Yeah, yeah. You know? When LeBron did, I'm done, Skip. You're going with him to the islands? Skip, yep. I, I ain't going to lie to you. Skip, yep. if, they, if Joy, if you, uh, Joy, I hope you're still here. Maybe you moved on. You you uh, A-list celeb. <laughs> but whoever reading that, if it breaking news and LeBron James is retired, Skip Bayless, I'm walking out the door with him. Mm. So I hope you, you do no, it by you yourself. Are not. I'm walking out the door with Brian. When mm. Brian done, I'm done. It's so mm. easily you would walk away. You claim that if you won the lottery, you'd still come to work. Nah, without I can't I can't I can't go on without LeBron. <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm gonna do. You know who for years and years <laughs> said when Tim Duncan walks out that door, I'm walking out that door? Greg Popovich. And the last time I checked. Tim Duncan is still retired, and Pop is still coaching. And, and, and Pop wished yeah. he had, because he didn't oh. know Kawhi was going to give him a headache. He, 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 that's a headache. Yeah. I would agree. I would agree. Maybe Pop should have retired. But the point is, all of a sudden, LeBron, you want to talk about help? Did you see what happened in the fourth quarter yesterday, albeit against the Brooklyn Nets? That that guy Jordan Clarkson from the Lakers. Yeah. Oh hell, he, he oh, scored oh, ten in the fourth. Oh, he and, the, and that other guy, Rodney Hood from yeah. the Utah Jazz, he scored I, nine. Okay. Yeah. Hood. We be, we been needing Hood. Yeah. We been needing to come because okay. he shot the good the first two games and then he went into a cold spell. So all so of a sudden, LeBron has help in the fourth quarter because those two off the bench players combined for nineteen fourth quarter points. Mm -hmm. That'll work, but right? Here, but here's the thing, though, Skip. Tristan Thompson has been out of the lot, basically out for the better part the entire season. Mm -hmm. Kevin Love missed six weeks. We got He's this. He's fine. We He's got doing this. great. So we He's still, back in the okay, saddle. Okay, so now what's going to be the starting lineup? Well, now you got, a good, you got the good problem. That you're, ain't you're no good sure. problem. Yeah, I, I like, I and like what about problem. Jetty? He's due back pretty soon. Remember, he had that great kick there at the end before he got hurt. Yeah, Jetty was playing well. Yeah, yeah. JR, I'm going to need JR to pick it up. Are you? Because I'm going to I'm gonna have to minimize JR's minutes. Mm. JR is down again in, in the minus section. These and are he, good problems. And we already know. As so, uh, this is what, watch the game. As soon as JR comes in, whoever he's guarding going to get the first bucket. <laughs> Shannon, LeBron what? James should now win his fourth ring. It's so, so – the path is a super highway to, to the Hall of Fame, obviously, to fourth ring. You, you can make, if they get the Hall of Fame speech, you can say you got four rings instead of just three. No, 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 no. Huh. And our speech, we're going to Four talk and five. Four in rings. Speech? Yeah. And, and I, Are you going to be speech, up there uh, with LeBron? In our speech, oh, I'm going. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I need to be there. Well, you would. Because I was a part of this. You'll present them, right? <laughs> yeah, nope. Nope? No. I was a part of this. Me, Rich Paul, Maverick, all of us, we you're a part of this. Oh, you're part of Clutch yeah. Sports now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Big announcement? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You should present him. No. I don't know what, who could present him better. Oh, you No, I, no, seriously. I who could do to better? Do. I'm not trying to do anything. Huh? Born on December 30th. You could do it. You could do it. Uh, LeBron he, would love that. Le LeBron he come out Ramon. Ramon. Yeah. Did you know his name was Ramon? Sliding. Yeah. Oh, Glow? Glow knew he was going to be special. Mm -hmm. That's what they call a Glow yeah, down well, in Africa. They, they have the glow. heat tomorrow night. So go that's bust them up. Uh, Win streak ends tomorrow night. Charlotte will bust Airlines. them up. Got something for you too, Anthony Davis. The Cavs mm -hmm. have yet to win since Le at American Airlines since oh, uh, LeBron's been We're going to win. We're going to win on tomorrow. Okay. We'll see. You won't put do on it. I, I will put some do on it. Is it time for the Giants to ship Odell Beckham out of New York? We'll discuss that next. No mercy. NFL Network's Ian Rappaport reported this morning that Odell Beckham Jr. will not set foot on a field for the Giants or any other team without a new contract. Odell's in the last year of his rookie deal and he played just four games last year after breaking his ankle. He's also had a bunch of off-the-field issues, the latest being the video of Odell in a bed with a woman in Paris with what appears to be drugs present. Giants owner John Mara was asked about Odell at the owner's meeting yesterday. Let's take a listen. I think too often he allows himself to get put in, in, in bad situations, and he needs to use a little better judgment. I said before that I, I'm tired of answering questions uh, about Odell's behavior and you know, what the latest incident is. And um, I think he knows what we expect of him. And uh, now it's up to him. When you say nobody's untouchable, can you foresee him not being on the team this year? I, I can't answer that one way or the other. I mean, we're certainly not shopping him, if that's what you're asking. Uh, but uh, again, when you're coming off a, a season where you're 
three and thirteen and played as poorly as we played, then I, I, you know I wouldn't say that anybody is untouchable. Shannon, what should the Giants do with Odell? I'm gonna call Odell's bluff. You know, Skip, there's a saying that says when people say I'm trying to find myself. Self is not something you find. Self is something that you create. John Mara said Odell keeps finding himself in these situations. Mm. Odell is not finding himself in these situations. Odell is creating these situations. Because here it is hard for me to believe. And if, if I'm the Giants, uh, uh, I'm, and I'm looking at it from John Mara's and the Giants' perspective, here's a guy that his behavior on the field has been less than exemplary. There have been some things that happens off the field. If this reported, uh, if this video is true. He's doing all of this, Skip, and he's scheduled to make a little less than $8 million. Yeah. If I cut Odell a check for $50 million, then what? If I can't control you, if I can't get you to behave, as my grandma used to say, G and ha, that's what they used to tell the mules, giddy up, G, ha, get him to go or stop. If I can't get you to do what I want you to do, Skip, when you're making three five, eight million, if I give you 50 million of my, my dollars mm -hmm. at the signing, a contract for 70 plus million guarantee, how in the hell are they going to get Odell Beckham to do what they want him to do? Mm. Odell Beckham, look, I, I got no, I understand you want your money, but you have to see, and as players sometimes we get, all we look at it is from our point of view. But you understand, look at what they're looking at. How do they trust you? I fought the Giants for this. They could have nipped this in the bud long time ago when he was a rookie. Odell just didn't get like this. This has been his behavior all the while. Tom Coughlin, when he got into that altercation with Josh Norman, when he really lost his cool, they asked Tom Coughlin about it. Tom Coughlin says, I'm trying to win a game. Mm -hmm. In other words, what Tom Coughlin was saying, I will, I'm willing to excuse any behavior. He Skip, the, one of the most disciplined NFL coaches to ever walk the sidelines, says, I'm willing to excuse his behavior mm -hmm. because he gives me the best opportunity to win the game. So Odell sees this. Mm -hmm. Because I'm so immensely talented, they'll excuse some of my behavior. Mm -hmm. So if I act foolish, if I act out, oh, well, that's Odell. He's so talented. Because you remember, Skip, the first thing out of their mouth, He's so talented. Mm -hmm. I can make a case he's the most talented receiver to ever play in the NFL. Mm -hmm. But what about these behavior? What about this? Odell is not finding himself mm -hmm. in the situation. Odell is creating these situations. And if I'm the Giants, I'm going to call his bluff. Because mm -hmm. I don't know, hey, here's a guy that's gotten the most, he's received the most money from, a shoe co from the Nike Corporation as far as a shoe mm -hmm. deal. And any player, and think about all the players that's walked more than Jerry, Joe Montana, or Elway, or uh, uh, Brady, or Manning, more than any of those guys. Mm -hmm. So there's really no drawback for him to ever act any other way because he's been rewarded. National television, national commercial, head and shoulders. Mm -hmm. So he beats head for. So there's no reason. There's really no real reason for Odell to do anything other than mm -hmm. what Odell is doing because he's been he's been properly compensated. He gets the flies all across the country, do all what he's been mm -hmm. doing. So what's the ramifications? What's the repercussions of him doing it any other way? Odell, if I'm John Maher, if I'm the Giants, I'm going to call his bluff. I'm going to see if you're real about this because guess what? I think uh, the Giants have been playing football since 1925. It's 2018. They went about... Mm, what, nine of those years, didn't even know who Odell Beckham was. Mm. They'll be okay without him because they've only gone to the playoffs once with him. Hell, mm. they can do that without him. That is true. So what are you saying you would do with him? I'm calling his bluff. Bye. You ain't coming. But here's, here's the thing, though, Skip. The highest Odell value will be will be around draft time. Mm -hmm. Put the feelers out there. What y'all got, what y'all want. I ain't, doing no, I ain't doing no Bill Belichick. I'm not, hey, I hear it's Odell for a second rounder. What you got? If somebody's with it, hey, you got a first, a second, you want to do something? Because maybe Odell will be, maybe he will act better. Because there's sometimes, it's, you know, sometimes, uh, uh, Skip, mm -hmm. your kids will act better with someone else than they do with you. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, you can't get rid of your own kid, but in a situation like this, maybe Odell will be better served in a different organization. Yep. If I'm the Giants, I'm not quietly putting out feelers. I am very publicly saying Odell is now on the trade block 
because I want to create an auction for Odell. I would, he, he has dis demonstrated a pattern of behavior that would make me conclude, if I'm John Mara especially, I've seen enough. He has now become more trouble than he's worth. And remember, he's not just talking about being the highest paid wide receiver. Remember when he said, I want to be the highest paid player. Yeah. Well, Two plus two equals out to me. Yeah, like, yeah. like, what, what? Where are you going with this? Because I think Odell has clearly demonstrated he is more interested in being an international rock star mm -hmm. than the leader of a championship team in New York City. Yes. So, again, I don't know what the market would be. Obviously, he is supremely talented. Oh, you can get a first the, round for him at, at the bare minimum. Okay. Well, if you're right about that, then I'm I'm running to the bank for that one. I'm running to the podium with that one. Cleveland, what I you got? First, man. Cleveland, you got a it. bunch of first round picks. Cleveland, what you got? Let me get a okay, couple of those first. Your headache is then going to become their headache because yep. they're going to have to s figure out how to sign him or what are they going to do? Are they going to tag him or and have him not come to camp? Is he going to threaten to retire? You know, Odell is just a different enough thinker that at some point, I, it wouldn't shock me if Odell said, you know what, I think I'm just going to quit. Okay. I'm, I'm just going to go do something else. I'm, I'm going to be a star. And I'm just going to go I be I tell a, you what, Yeah. let's see how long that Nike endorsement lasts. I agree. Once he retires from the NFL. Yeah. Because the last, the only people I know that's going to have lifetime deals yeah. in, in, in their sports is probably like Michael Jordan has his, mm -hmm. LeBron's going to have his, Kobe and Federer. A football player, it's surprising that a football player got this much to begin with mm -hmm. because what the, hell, what the hell else you can you do with cleats besides play on the football field? Mm -hmm. At least with basketball shoes, you can wear them with a shirt and tie. Mm -hmm. You can wear them to the mall. You wearing a pair of cleats to the mall, clack, mm -hmm. clacking all on the floor? Because here's the thing, Skip, the thing that I, this is what I, this is what I love most. I understand, having played the game of football professionally for 14 years, that superstars and the better players get afforded certain privileges by the franchise but the really good ones don't abuse that privilege. Mm -hmm. You tell me Odell hadn't ab abused the privileges that the Giants have bestowed upon him because he's so immensely talented. You tell me that's the behavior of a guy. So the guy that's coming in, the young guy that's coming in, mm -hmm. when you say, guys, I want you to look to the guy, look no further. Yeah. They looking at Odell? They are. Yeah. And he has proven so far to be a solo act in a game in which, as you know full well, it requires team unity and veteran leadership to go win a championship. It's the ultimate, because you got 53, Skip. 53. You can't be a solo act. No. You can't go your own way with your own set of rules. You, you can't take the whole offseason off and miss all the quarterback throwing camps or whatever, you know, with Eli at Duke or right. whatever. And remember, in four years, what do we know about Odell? His team has played in one playoff game, and what happened before that playoff game? Mm -hmm. He led a group of receivers to South Beach to sun themselves to prepare for a game on the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field, right? Yes. And he dropped a key third down pass in the first drive from Eli, and the rest is playoff history for Aaron Rodgers because they easily won the game. It's just hard for me to believe, Skip, that Odell Beckham will ever maximize his ability by doing the, some of the things that he do in the offseason. I, look, I, I, hey. Maybe he's going to be the first, but it's hard for me to believe that LeBron and Kobe and Jordan, I mean, you, I mean, they go, go into concerts and jet setting. What's important to you? What's really important to you? Is football really important to yeah. you or it, what football can right. provide and the access that it gives you? Is that more important? Which is what I've always said about Johnny and the irony of this conversation is, trust me, Johnny and Odell have hung out together a whole lot in the last few off seasons. Mm -hmm. They both became it kids in their own way. They both became more famous, in Johnny's case, for clubbing than quarterback. Right. And in Odell's case, in, in a lot of ways, he's been become more famous being that international rock star than he is as a football player because he doesn't have anything to show, ultimately, for being a football player. And Johnny, for a while, thought that he could be that it kid, that Johnny Kardashian, and that that would be enough to sustain him right. for, forever. You know, like he'd just retire into that. But how many times have we heard him say, Odell says, I get it, you know what I'm saying? But the, the old saying is, Skip, our actions prove who we are. Yep. Our words prove who we want to be. Mm -hmm. What is Odell actions and what is his words? Yeah. Because they're not jiving. I know what he's saying, but what are you seeing? And for 
and, 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 and the Giants, John Morrow know full as well. The yep. greatest player in Giants history had these demons. Now, I don't mm -hmm. know if what that substance was. I don't know if Odell has a, had a problem. I don't know. But that demon that LT had to deal with, Skip. Yep. Yep. So the, I, I'm sure Mr. Morrow does, and that organization doesn't want to travel down that road no, again. they don't. But Odell, this, the ball's in your court. Yep. And for you to allow, Skip, the video is not what concerns me. You know why it doesn't concern me? Because if you allow that to happen in front of someone you just met the night before, imagine what you're capable of doing around people mm -hmm. that you know and you feel most comfortable with. Doesn't the company you keep reveal your character? Yeah. Show mm -hmm. me a guy's friends, yep. and I'll tell you everything you need to know about mm -hmm. the guy. That is true. Well, we have seen examples of people, you know, consistently getting in trouble with one organization and moving to another one and having great careers. Yeah, so it's not maybe. unheard of. Yeah. Um, that may just be what has to happen. Next up, Johnny Manziel threw in front of 13 NFL scouts at the University of San Diego's Pro Day last week. Johnny has not played in an NFL game in over two years. And many people brought up the fact that scouts watched him throw while zero NFL teams were present to watch Colin Kaepernick throw earlier this month. Manziel addressed that over the weekend, tweeting... This will probably cause an uproar, but I'm tired of the Kaepernick versus myself comparisons and anger. Cap is doing amazing things right now, changing lives and donating millions of dollars. His impact off the field from a societal standpoint is legendary and straight admirable. Standing up for people who, get, who often don't get heard and for a race that continuously deals with problems after problem in this country for centuries. This world we live in is absolutely crazy, and I believe what he's doing has an amazing impact. The facts of the matter are he, the reason he's not being signed are non-football based. The guy took a team to the Super Bowl and continuously wreaked havoc on the NFC West and the league. Maybe he had a bad year two years ago, but he's not a bad player, and that's a fact. In my opinion, the guy still has a lot in the tank, but it's not my place to say what he wants to do with his career. All I can speak for is myself and trying to turn my life around from the depths it was in. God bless and have a great Saturday. Mm. Shannon, do you like Manziel's tweets? I love Johnny Manziel's tweet. I think Johnny Manziel is tweet. What he tweeted is what a lot of athletes and a lot of people are thinking. But the comparison, Johnny, is not between you and Cap as a player. They're looking at the possibility of the opportunity that you might get presented with as opposed to one that's going to not be given to Colin Kaepernick. Mm -hmm. If you look at the play on the field, it's not even close. If you look at the behavior off the field, is not even close. They're judging, they're judging Colin Kaepernick worse than if he abused a woman, worse than if he got a DUI and killed someone, worse than that if he abused animals. That's how they're treating Colin Kaepernick because we've seen guys with those kinds of history mm -hmm. be given an opportunity. And that yet, no, I'm very hesitant to use the, the, the term second chance. Because Colin Kaepernick doesn't need a second chance, Skip, because I don't believe he's done anything to ruin the first chance. Colin Kaepernick, okay, San Francisco 49ers, they, didn't, they wanted to go in a different direction. Okay, that's well within their reason. I got no problem with that. But to sit here and say Colin Kaepernick done something so egregious that no team should give him an opportunity, that's what they're saying. Colin Kaepernick threw in Texas and nobody showed up but the person that was there that was taking the picture. Mm -hmm. Johnny Manziel shows up to a University of San Diego and two guys that's going to be later round draft picks, if drafted at all, and 13 teams show up. Mm -hmm. That's what the people, that's what the, the hypocrisy and the people are seeing. Johnny, if Johnny's turned his life around, so be it. But Skip, I, you know, I see better than I hear. I've heard him say this before, but we have yet to see it. Mm -hmm. So, but I'm with it. Hey, America's all about second chances. Mm -hmm. Colin Kaepernick doesn't deserve a second chance. Hell, he's on his first one. Yep. But he deserves an opportunity to show people that he can still play or he can't play in the NFL. Yep. And unfortunately, what it appears to me is that these owners, and we're going to talk about one of them a, yep. a little later in the show, Skip, these owners have it in their mind that what Colin Kaepernick did is the worst of the worst. It's the egregious of the most egregious. And that's shame. That's laughable because I cannot believe a guy. And when you see all these guys, Skip, that's not even had a fourth of the career Colin Kaepernick had, and they're still getting jobs as backup. They're mm. still getting opportunities to play in the NFL. That's what I don't get. Mm -hmm. And then they try to feed you, well, it's talent-based. Stop it. Mm. I mean, you might fool some of the fans, but you can't fool the players. 
especially the players that are playing the game or the players that played the game or the people that cover the game, Skip. You mm. covered the game for 40 years. You know when a guy can play or he can't play. But this is this is a shame. I'm glad you tweeted this, Johnny. But I uh, um, and, and I get what you're trying to say. But they're not comparing you as players. They're mm -hmm. comparing the possibility of the opportunity you might perceive mm -hmm. receive, while Colin Kaepernick probably will not get that same opportunity. Mm. <sighs> I agree with everything you said except for your conclusion. I didn't like what Johnny tweeted. I thought he should have left that unsaid. Left that part out. Yeah. Let let us leap to that conclusion. Okay. Because in the end, he, or in the, let's go back to the beginning of his tweet, he starts off saying, I know this is going to cause an uproar, I fear it will, and, and to me it should. <laughs> so I told you on Friday, I was offended by the mere thought of putting Johnny Manziel in the same sentence with yes. Colin Kaepernick. So we got Johnny Kardashian over here mm -hmm. who fell into substance abuse hell and abused a woman in Cleveland in his first two years and flamed out in ways we've rarely seen a high-pick quarterback or first-round pick quarterback flame out. We have that versus a Colin Kaepernick who came within one controversial non-call of winning a Super Bowl, mm -hmm. and then the next year came within one slight underthrow of getting back to the Super Bowl. Right. That's pretty great, man. Yeah. So I can't even, like, I'm the, the mere thought of connecting the dots between these two just, it makes me sick. Mm -hmm. But what Johnny is doing with his tweets is he's, he's not so much trying to laud and applaud what Colin has stood for. He's basically trying to say, hey, give me a break here. You know, don't, don't blame me for what the league is doing to him. Correct. Right? Yes. And, and he's saying, don't disqualify and derail my comeback attempt just because Colin's not getting the chance that I might be getting now. Right. It's kind of desperate on Johnny's part. And again, I don't think he needs to, to go there. Mm -hmm. I, I think w you should draw that conclusion. Right. Don't, don't let him try to do it because it's just a desperate act on his part. So he's going completely over the top now with humility and contrition to try to win back some sympathy, as he said the other day. I, I said this on Friday's show. He said, this isn't my second chance. This is my 35th chance, Johnny said this. Mm -hmm. Well, it is, because whatever leeway he had early in Cleveland is gone. Right. So he's saying this is the last of his last chances. So these were desperate tweets to say, hey, world, don't blame me for him. Right. You know, like, don't, right. don't put us together. So it's kind of, it, it's basically what we're saying, except he's doing it for self-preservation instead of to say, look at what Colin's done. And just kept the thing, normally what we see is that if a person gets to a certain place, he shows a, he's good at what he does, mm -hmm. and it doesn't happen, okay, he has to move on. Yeah. But what has Johnny shown in the NFL that he deserves a second chance? We keep talking about, well, he was so great in college. Oh, he won the Heisman Trophy. Okay, I'm college. Okay. He has shown nothing. Right. Zero. At least Colin Kaepernick can say, well, what has Colin Kaepernick yeah. done? I've taken a team to a Super Bowl. I've taken a team to an NFC Championship game. Mm -hmm. I've beaten Aaron Rodgers. I set an NFL record for the most rush yards in a playoff game by a quarterback. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that Colin Kaepernick can say, well, in the league, I've done this. Sure. I should be given an opportunity to see. To sh he should be given an opportunity to dispel or, or, or to, to prove you right or yep. wrong. One way or another, Skip, he should be afforded that opportunity. Yeah. And if he comes back and someone gives him an opportunity and it doesn't happen, say, well, hey, we gave him a chance, it just didn't work out. Yeah. But to sit here and to say, well, nah, he can't do it, or the NFL is a talent-based business, when you're pulling guys out that have been retired for two and three years, when you're pulling guys out that hadn't played meaningful snaps since 2012, obviously people, you, you can't fool all these people. they like, hold on, wait a minute. I haven't even heard of this guy. Oh, this guy's terrible. And he gets an opportunity and Cap can't yeah. because he tried to bring attention. Think about what's happened over the weekend, Skip. All these students going to D.C., yeah. all these students that was in New York. Think about Colin Kaepernick. Did, Colin Kaepernick did a very similar situation mm -hmm. about a different topic, and he's been criticized. And we're applauding a lot of us. Not everybody's happy that the kids are doing this. They're trying to ch change the narrative to something else. But that's what it's about. 
But see, Skip, if you don't like, see, here's the thing, and I've said this before. If you don't like the guy, you won't like what he's standing for. Yep. And if you don't like what he's standing for, it will turn you against the very guy. So that's what we're seeing. Some people don't like Cap. So what he's standing for, they don't like that cause either. Mm -hmm. Some people don't want to talk about the cause, and because he brought it to more to the forefront, they don't like him. Mm -hmm. So this is, and that's what it is, Johnny. They're not comparing you for talent to talent or what you guys have done once you were in mm -hmm. the NFL. They're comparing the possibility or the likelihood you get an opportunity on another team, mm -hmm. as you said, your 35th chance, yep. Colin Kaepernick still on his first, and he doesn't get anything. That's the problem that people will have. The truth is, Colin Kaepernick should now be given a chance to start for an NFL team. Not, not to win a starting job. He, he's earned the right to become a starter for a team that needs a starter, and we know there's still there are a bunch of teams. 10 of those. But, right? I, but this notion, well, if you bring Cap in, you have to have two offenses. Yeah. If you want me to believe that Mike McCarthy called the exact same mm -hmm. game plan for Brett Hundley as he did Aaron absurd. Rodgers, that's a, absurd. It's absurd. Johnny Manziel, at the very best, should be given a chance to make a roster. That's right. the very best. Right. To your point, it's, it's just pro football teams are reaching back into his glorious Heisman <laughs> Johnny football past yeah. saying, could he recapture the Johnny football magic we saw at right. Texas A&M against Nick Saban twice? That's what they're saying. Yeah. Could he at age, what is he, 25? Could yeah. he reach back? And that's the thing. I mean, okay. we look, I mean, come on. Let's be real. I mean, Matt Castle. When the last time Matt Castle's been good, Skip? Like you said, he did go to the Pro Bowl his first year in Kansas, Kansas City. City. But that's, that was that's so, about it. That was 2009. Right. At, at this point, I don't think anyone's even asking for him to be a starter. The, he should have an opportunity yeah. to be at, be a backup. Like no, but, no you one's know what? That, that, that he's a even starter. that's offensive to me. I just can't imagine Colin having to hold a clipboard. It just gets let him hold. Like, he start, he started that holding. I mean, clipboard. yeah, and you can and, right. and you can make the argument based off of his last two years in the league yeah. that that's not an inappropriate spot for him to be. But the reality is, everyone who has any ob objectivity at all knows that this isn't about football. Exactly. And if you're okay with your team having terrible quarterbacks and not signing Kaepernick for not being about mm -hmm. football, then you're just okay with losing. Yeah. One NFL owner made some controversial comments this weekend, and we'll discuss that next. No mercy. Jerry Richardson gave up day-to-day -day control of the Panthers in December after an investigation into alleged workplace misconduct. The allegations included Richardson inappropriately touching female employees and making sexual and racial comments. Texas owner Bob McNair was asked about Richardson and told Jarrett Bell of USA Today, quote, some of the comments could have been made jokingly. I'm sure he didn't mean to offend anybody. Shannon, do you have a problem with this? Hell yeah, I got a real, real problem with this. And you know, Skip, I used to hold Mr. McNair in very, very high regards. Uh, Rick Smith, who's a very good friend of mine, I've known Rick Smith, the former general manager for over 20 mm -hmm. years. Mr. McNair gave Rick an opportunity to be a general manager, a person of color, a job in this position when very few had that title. Mm -hmm. I think at the time, only Ozzie Newsom had the capacity, had, could say he's an African-American yep. general manager of an NFL football team. Mm -hmm. But then as this protest started going and I started to hear him talk, say, if you listen to a person talk, they'll tell you exactly who they are. When he said, we can't have the prisoners running the asylum. Mm -hmm. Well, theoretically, well, that's not the phrase. It was, we can't have the inmates running the asylum. Mm -hmm. But the mere fact he that he... prison. Go ahead. Yeah, no, it's prison. He said inmates yeah, running, running the prison. prison. Yeah. The mere fact yeah. that he would utter and he could see a parallel mm -hmm. between guys kneeling for the anthem in yep. protest of police brutality as prisoners and the asylum as the NFL, yep. the, for him to draw that parallel, it kind of soured me on him. Sure. And then the more he started to talk, now he's saying maybe... He didn't mean to offend. I need people to understand. You do not get to determine what is offensive. Mm -hmm. It's only the people that's being offended mm -hmm. that gets to determine that. <laughs> a la Mr. Snyder and that Native American mm -hmm. symbol on the side of his helmet. You don't get to say it's a badge of courage because you're not that. Mm. We don't get to tell Jewish people what's offensive to them, do we? They won't allow it. But, oh, it's, no, Mr. McNair. And you're talking about, you know, uh, uh, if he'd have thought about it, he might have should have fought. 
No, it's not the time to fight now. Mm. He should have fought when these when they alleged these allegations yep. instead of paying it off and then signing NDAs, Non-Disclosure Act. Because if you're so sure, if you 100% for certain that your guy's on the up and up mm -hmm. and he's such a good guy, tell him he can tell these women that they can go speak publicly and, it, and they can nullify mm. the non-disclosure. Tell him to do that mm. because, see, Skip, this is not a one-off. When he was the head of, mm -hmm. I think it was Hardee's and Denny's, yep. he settled a racial bias claim mm -hmm. to the tune of, I think, 46 to $54 million. Yep. Now he had to settle another racial claim mm -hmm. with a scout in the very department. Yep. Now he has these, I guess you can't call them allegations if you settle. There yep. has to be some truth to them That's because correct. why else would you have settled? Yep. Here's the thing, Skip. If none of this was true, Mm -hmm. Why in the hell Mr. Richardson fought so hard to get a, think about it, he got a sports franchise in Charlotte, North Carolina. And you know what, Skip? A lot of writers are keeping Paul Tagliabue out of the NFL because he gave Jacksonville the Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're keeping Paul Tagliabue out of the Hall of Fame because he gave Charlotte and Jacksonville franchises before he put one back in L.A. Mm. And they hold that against him. Mm. Bob McNair, do you realize what you're saying? Now, here's the thing, and I've been asked, well, how do you think players are going to respond to this? Players are going to take that man's money and go sign there and say, well, he wasn't mm -hmm. talking to me because how many NBA players signed with the Clippers when they knew Donald Sterling's background and his mm -hmm. history with race? Because guess what, Skip? My grandfather used to say, boy, mm -hmm. anything can be bought can damn sure be sold. Mm -hmm. And we know people will sell their integrity. They'll mm -hmm. sell their very worth for a high enough dollar. So they will take this man's money, knowing how he feels, not only about them. Do you? I don't know if you've noticed, Mr. McNair, but there's something going on. Mm -hmm. And it's called Me Too. And it's not a situation where if you got a car, they got one too. You got a fur coat, they got one too. It's about women and some men dealing with sexual assault or harassment mm -hmm. on the job. Mm. That's what Mr. Richardson signed and paid these people off. That's why he did it. I get he's your friend. But you can never, ever make it seem like you side with him mm -hmm. over these women talking about, well, they, maybe he didn't mean to offend them. Mm -hmm. Huh? Where? And you thought that was okay? Skip, I keep telling you, it doesn't bother me what people say publicly. If he said that publicly, what in the hell do you think he's saying privately? Mm -hmm. I can't, sometimes it defies logic. Sometimes that we think smart people or rich people say some of the dumbest things. Mm. But for him to go public and say about what, Mr., what is alleged Mr. Richardson mm -hmm. did, and here's the, I'm going to turn it over to you, Skip, because I know you got some very interesting points. Mr. Richardson, did, wasn't even thinking about selling this franchise or his stake in the franchise until Sports Illustrated came. Sports Illustrated broke the story on Friday. Friday, Saturday, late Sunday night, Mr. Richardson said he's putting his shares up for sale. Why in the hell would someone that fought so hard to get a franchise in Charlotte, North Carolina, mm -hmm. put, his sale, put the team up for sale two days after this story broke? Mm. We know why. Yeah. And for you to defend him is abhorrent. Yeah. It's ridiculous. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Sports Illustrated not only broke the story, they broke him down. Yeah. To the bottom. He had no exit except exit strategy. So here's my bottom line on what we just heard from Bob McNair. Here we had one 80-year-old white clueless billionaire, Bob mm -hmm. McNair, talking about another 81-year-old white clueless billionaire team owner in Jerry Richardson. That's how I boil this down. Right. And they are both completely prehistorically clueless on all matters that really matter now, today, to the National Correct. Football League. And it would serve this league well if they could somehow place a gag order on most of their owners, if not all of them, because every time they open their mouths... They don't just insert foot, they, they insert it down their throat mm -hmm. because they're killing 
the popularity and the saleability of their league every time they open their mouths because they, they continue to expose their prehistoric mindset yes. when it comes to the treatment and abuse of women and the plight of black America yeah. as it pertains to their black employees, their players, right. protesting during the anthem. Why is that? Well, we don't know. They, yeah. they can't do that to the flag. It's, it's the flag. It's the country. Yeah, it's the flag. Yeah. It's the flag. And by the way, speaking of that, Bob McNair then went a step further in Jarrett Bell's piece. He says, this is Bob McNair, our playing field, that's not the place for political statements, not the place for religious statements. Oh, so now we're opening that can of worms also. So it's not okay for a player to do this when he scores or for the FCA group, the Bible study, to, to kneel together from both teams after the game. I don't know. I guess that's over also. Yeah, most teams pray before and I, after I the know. game. So is that out? I guess so, so when we in attendance and we have a moment of silence, mm. is that going to be out? You see, Mr. McNair, every time you open your mouth, I see a toe pop out because <laughs> your foot's in your mouth. And you won't stop because wow. he's bringing up things. I, and I'm sure Roger, uh, Roger Goodell's skin, Kamish's skin is crawling. Mm -hmm. He's like, why would you go here? Why would you say mm -hmm. that? For you to come to the defense of a man that settled sexual mm -hmm. harassment Yep. situation for you to defend his behavior is unacceptable Mr. McNair yeah and to your point he says I'm sure Jerry didn't mean to offend well it's because he's not even aware of how out of bounds his behavior and comments are that's the problem you know why not Steve? even aware because when you're wealthy and white you don't, don't think rules are applicable to you I guess so. he's like I can do hey you know I'm Jerry I got all you work for me so you know, a lot of times, Skip, people like when you work for someone, mm -hmm. the people think they own you. Well, because what did Donald Sterling say? I buy them homes, I buy them clothes, I put food. No, you don't. Mm. No, no, you don't. Mm. They're providing a service. They are. And so the, this is it goes to the thinking, the greater thinking of how a lot of these men think. But for him to come, Skip, look. For him to come to the defense, and I know there are some people in our past that have done some things that we're not proud of. And maybe in behind closed doors is one thing. But to say that publicly, Skip, nothing can come out of that. Because if you defend them publicly, yep. you're almost saying the victims are lying. Correct. And you take his word over their words. Mr. Well, I, I, I would go so far as to think he doesn't even think that they're victims. <laughs> no. Uh, I don't like to use the word true. clueless, but, but the only way you can logically mm -hmm. explain this is that they are actually clueless. Both. But Both. the reason that he feels comfortable saying this is the reason that these environments ex exist yes. in the first yes. place. And because they make wonder, excuses for you, what happens. You wonder about his environment with the Texans. Well, how right? can, I mean, of course you, I mean, you certainly can't take his apology about the, uh, the, the prison comments mm. seriously. Like, yeah, yeah. How you're defending it, all of this other stuff. Mm. Yeah, most most of these guys, mm -hmm. birds of a feather, yep. locked together. Well, that's you've why diversity is important. When you have all seen, the same people in the same room telling mm. each other they're right all the time, that's what happens. You Up next, he's the in the 19th season in the NBA. Bucks guard and NBA oh, champion. Oh, here we go. Jason Terry joins us coming yeah. up. No mercy. Our next guest is in his 19th season in the NBA. He scored over 18,000 career points and won a championship with the Mavericks in 2011. From the Milwaukee Bucks, Jason Terry, welcome to Undisputed. Thank you very much. Appreciate you having me. Jason Terry. <laughs> hey. What an amazing run you have had. You are now 40 years of age, as Joyce said, in your 19th season. And you played with Dirk and Jason Kidd in Dallas and obviously won a ring and people were making a case you you could have been the MVP of that series for those last couple of games. You went 27-21 in the two closeout games. Then you played with Paul Pierce and KG, not only in Boston, but in Brooklyn. And then you played with James Harden and Dwight Howard in Houston. And now you're playing alongside of the guy featured last night on 60 Minutes, the Greek freak in Milwaukee. And yesterday you started for the Milwaukee Bucks and played 29 minutes in a victory over, unfortunately, my <laughs> San Antonio Spurs. I'm not going to forgive you for that. But you're up against a kid named DeJounte Murray. You're both from Seattle, but he's 21 and you're 40. And you're just all over in the whole game. So give us some thought. What's the secret to your longevity? Well, first of all, I always keep God first, you know, so I'm tremendously blessed uh, to have health. 
Uh, but also look at guys like Tom Brady, Floyd Mayweather, uh, Big Poppy Ortiz. Mm -hmm. You know, I took some of their uh, regiments that they use, you know, Brady with his, with his uh, diet. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not a, a super nut. Mm -hmm. so to speak, but I try not to eat a lot of fried foods. I drink a lot of eternal water. Mm. Comes from the soul. Mm. Never been touched by man. <laughs> so I, I keep my body hydrated okay. so my muscles are nice and, and mm -hmm. loose and functional. Uh, and then training. You know, training in the off-season. When I was young, I would train for hours upon hours. Sometimes two-a-days. Mm. But uh, Floyd May Mayweather said one time uh, at this age, if you cannot go out and train 100%, you don't train at all. Hmm. And so now when I don't feel 100%, I won't go out there. I'll take a day off, you know, ride the bike, get with the kids, uh, play a little bit, uh, and I'll stay away from the gym. Hmm. And so I think that's what has, has given me a little bit of longevity. And I've been fortunate, obviously, to play with a lot of great players, yeah. good coaches mm -hmm. uh, that understand at this age uh, not to, to, to drag me through strenuous practices. Mm -hmm. See, Shannon? Tom Brady. Shannon? Yeah. Always coming well, up. I'll be drinking that hen. That, that, oh, that man, 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 man ain't touched that either. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that, are, that are the ginger. I, I'm a mad dog guy. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, two of the top teams in the league are dealing with major injuries to their superstars. Kyrie Irving had a procedure on his left knee on Saturday and will be out three to six weeks. Out west, Seth Curry came back Friday after missing six games with a right ankle injury, but his return lasted just 25 minutes and he sprained his MCL. He will be reevaluated in three weeks, and Steve Kerr said there's no way he's playing in the first round of the playoffs. But LeBron James is healthy and continues to dominate. The Cavs beat the Nets yesterday, led by LeBron's 37 points, 10 rebounds, and 8 assists. So, Jason, after the injuries to Kyrie and Steph, how much easier is LeBron's path to a title? Oh, Kyrie is... You forgot about the Greek freak. Uh huh. Mm. I knew that was coming up. They gotta come through the Bucks uh, first, yeah. and you gotta remember my first championship. Uh -huh. Yeah, I got the code. Uh -huh. Oh, you got the code? I got the you code. got the cheat code. I got the code Ooh. to the king's Ooh. throne. Ooh. Right. He a different guy now. I, I know this. <laughs> he's, he's a little more confident than he was when uh, we met up with him in 2000. Wait, was that when he melted down in uh, that finals? I got a little meltdown. Yeah, got a little meltdown Look, going, no, Shannon. Don't listen. Don't follow up. <laughs> skip, don't follow up. Skip stuff. Uh, no meltdown. Yeah. <laughs> but he's more confident now, man. He is stronger than ever. Uh, is he better than he's been right now at this point? I don't know. I like when uh, there, that, that NBA Finals, the first time when uh, Kyrie got hurt mm -hmm. and Golden State won that series, he could have gotten MVP. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, led in every category on, on the losing team. I think he could have gotten MVP. That would have been the first time ever. He was at a tremendously high level then. But he, he, he's up there. He's up there right now. Mm -hmm. Skip would have you believe because of these injuries, and they happened earlier, yeah. that LeBron path that everybody's just like parted and LeBron's just going to walk right through. I don't know. We just played uh, Cleveland in Cleveland. Looked like they're starting to get a little bit of rhythm with the new guys that mm -hmm. they've acquired. Jordan Clarkson is playing extremely well. Rodney Hood has been uh, injured a little bit. Nance mm -hmm. is still out, but, uh, you know, they're, they're deep. They're deep. And one thing he can do is he can position his players and put them where he wants them, quarterback them, uh, so they can be successful. So, um, you know, home court advantage is one thing. It's tough to win in Cleveland playing against eight. Oh, can I say that? Yeah. Eight, oh, you tried to fish him? Huh? Huh? They don't call no fouls on LeBron. You know that, Jet. Right. Hit the man all upside right. his head. He don't get offensive fouls, man. He running people over like a running back. Ooh. Look at James Harden getting shooting 20 shots a game right. from the foul line. Who's better? You already know. Don't play. Jay, Jay, don't I play. played with the beard. Don't, don't. I know you did. But well, we know he's the MVP this year. Mm -hmm. right. He is. MVP, <laughs> best player. They're not the same thing. Okay, right. but go ahead. Skip. I'm intrigued by something that Jet just hinted at, and that is that the Milwaukee Bucks sit right now just a game out of the sixth spot, <clears throat> currently occupied by the Wizards, who seem to be going backwards. Yeah. If you vault up past the Wizards and the Cleveland Cavaliers stay three, guess what, Shannon? That would mean that. Jason Terry and the Greek Freak get to play LeBron and company in round one, correct? Oh, yeah. And then what would happen? Well, we like the matchup. Uh, the matchup is good for us. Obviously, what it does to LeBron is he has to guard the Greek Freak. They don't have anybody really else. interesting. Who else can guard him? Kevin Love can't guard him. Can Nance Jr. a little can bit? That, huh? It, Ooh. Larry Nance His daddy could have guarded him. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> hey, hold on, hold on. Huh? Did you hear what, did you, after he got out the shower, did you hear what Giannis said? What'd he say? What'd he say? He said, I'm in the shower and I'm thinking, 
what could I have done differently? See. The man dropped 40. Mm -hmm. He dropped 40. Now, you know Greek got all those points. Y'all were down by 19 with three minutes to go, and mm -hmm. you got those trash points. So his stat line looks good. Mental mm -hmm. warfare. It goes, but it, it, he was playing mental, mental war. He's learned that already. In his, mm -hmm. You know good and well they don't want to see it. Now, you know that's a different man in the playoffs. I don't know, but see, I played against LeBron plenty of times. And what I heard when, when Giannis drove at him and, and hit him in his chest, ooh, ooh, he came really? in his chest. Really? Yeah, no. You, you're in this chest. Jet, that chest Jet, right on him. Jet, now you know Gian, Giannis ain't got enough bricks in his back pocket. Well, to he had something that night because he – The, the night ooh. he dropped 40 and 15 on y'all? Giannis had 37, 8, and, and 9. They were trash points. You down 19 with three minutes to go. Mm. So come on now, Jet. Tell the truth now. Three-point game at the end. Mm. You proud of that? LeBron was trying to come out, y'all try to make it a ball game. Mm. But you know what? I, I want you to enjoy that first round money. Because if y'all played him in the first round, that far as you go. Mm. You know, tough. all of a sudden, <laughs> Milwaukee is going the different direction everybody else is going because the injury gods keep telling this team, you're out, you're out, you're out. But they're saying to Milwaukee, they're getting healthy. Jabari's back and Chris Middleton's back. And I, is Malcolm Brogdon going to be back? Yeah, he'll, he'll, Malcolm Brogdon will be back soon. And see, that's what people understand. Uh, with Jabari Parker, he's the X factor. He's another guy that LeBron uh, <clears throat> don't do can't that. guard. Don't do that. Uh, don't. Wow, he just said uh, he yeah, can't guard. Yeah, guard him. yeah, you need to stop flight this. school. Yeah, you know you gonna have these people at home that's watching uh, this. They're talking about Giannis and, and, and Jabari can go. Now you gonna have LeBron go off and go get average for the playoffs against you, your team. Fifty. We want him to get fifty. And no assists. But hey, but you know he gonna get them assists. <laughs> no, he's not. Because you know how he be picking. You saw the assists how he be doing mm. it. Mm. You saw that. Yeah, we're going to be on that. You saw we, that. We, I'll be we, cross, we the cross that. court. We're going to be on You it. can't stop we, it. I like mm. my supporting cast better than his. I'm going to just go on the mm. record and say it. Well, we, hey, they're going to massage this thing. Andrew's been uh, affecting them all year. Tristan's been in and out of the lineup. Mm -hmm. Kevin Love. They're back. As you They're back. Well, but hello. But okay. it's going to take time for us to get it right. Oh. But if anybody can make these ingredients that, that we haven't had before and make a great dish, it's Bron. Right. You know he's a great chef, well, Jeff. Well, Tell well, the truth now. Well, we'll catch y'all in the second round. Hmm. We, we catch you in the second round. You no, y'all ain't going no second little, round. Y'all going to be in the sixth seed. Yo, little, no, no. Y'all ain't going no <laughs> second round. Well, we can manipulate this thing however we want to hmm. at this point. You know, seven, you, eight. You better just eight, get, you better hopefully catch get, him in the final. Oh, the you, final. oh yeah. If I was you, right. I would avoid LeBron at all costs. That's mm -hmm. what I would do. Jason Terry has always been kryptonite for LeBron James because Jason knows the secrets of how you deal with oh, LeBron. Oh, I'm surprised you even right. showed up this morning. Right. He body bagged you about six years you ago. See, well, I knew that was coming, mm. and I knew it was coming. Joy, did the joy. I should have pulled my little picture out that I carry around mm. for you and them other little kids <laughs> that always heckle me mm. pulling up that old picture. Well, man. all you need to say is in the two closeout games of the 2011 finals. Oh, he got five oh, he, and he six, was getting. He, he scored 27 and 21 and outscored LeBron in those two uh, games by 10. I told I was like, miss, and you couldn't miss. <laughs> Joker miss. wouldn't miss not one shot. So in those two games, Jason uh -huh. Terry was a plus 14 and plus minus, and LeBron James was a minus 35. Skip, if you're and, gonna and, if you want to take one year out of a man's 15 year career, oh, I I'm gonna get, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I, give it to you. That's all I got. I can yeah. take it. But when you were at Boston, what they do? Uh oh. When you went to Brooklyn, what they do? Uh huh. <laughs> I'm old now. I remember I got I, my mind, my mind ain't right. But, but, but now he's got a young player, and I keep saying it's sure. time for him to rise and shine because you need to do something when it matters in the postseason. Wouldn't that be a great breakout performance to have, a coming out party for Giannis first round against LeBron? That'd be interesting. For real? Yeah. Well, I'm just saying. I, Let me ask you a question. What's the likelihood of Taylor Swift dropping the album one week and another artist dropping the album the same week and that artist out selling Taylor Swift? What's the likelihood of that happening? Well, if it's Beyonce. What's mm. the, or Adele. Or Adele. Mary J. Blige. You see know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when, when, that, when LeBron dropped, mm. come on, baby. You know what, Jet? I just like our supporting cast a lot. Y'all got a nice supporting cast. got rid of my guy, Isaiah Thomas. That was wrong. They, what guy. you mean? The basketball they shouldn't, guys, have, got, the they basketball shouldn't have got him. Like that. They, they shouldn't they have got like him. him. He was already injured. The basketball he's guards had already frowned on him. He's now, though. Well, let, mm. I'm, I'm glad he's healthy for the Lakers. You won't call the wrong or Isaiah Thomas? I won't call the wrong. We'll get, because I won't call. Because call the wrong understands what he is. Call the wrong understand. Jet, what now you will, know when you have a team, you got to have players understand who and what they are. 100%. So tell us what you see in the freak to, to date in his maturation. Where, where is he? Well, he's starting to get a little more comfortable mm -hmm. 
uh, with his jump shot. Okay. As you've seen against your Spurs oh, uh, last good. night, three for three uh, from three. He did. Has, didn't hesitate. Cotton shot the ball. Mm -hmm. I think another thing is his post game, mm -hmm. uh, which which teams have to double team him. There, there's nobody, even LeBron, who can guard him in the post. And so when he makes the right decision, uh, when they double team, it allows our shooters mm -hmm. uh, to get wide. You know, Brown watching this, right? He, you he know, should, Brown watching. He should be. He watching this. He should be. And, and so, hold on, let me question. Uh -huh. just, just so, just for my edif just for my edification. Okay. Are you saying when LeBron's in the post, Greek Freak got him one on one? Y'all ain't coming with the double. Oh, uh, we're bringing the house. Oh, okay. Mm. That's what I was just checking. Just and by it. the way, there is one human who can rival LeBron on the break, and that's this guy. Oh yeah. You, you guys, when you were getting out to run yesterday, yes. it's just over. It's Man, the like, dude take three steps, and he had to, from half court, and he had the rim. <laughs> Them long legs. He's tearing the rim down, man. No, but he's become a, a better facilitator, and I think his next level is what LeBron does. Mm. Position your pieces, put them in a place so they can mm. be successful. Yeah, look at Abel one mm. can spare off. Okay, what do you see in Golden State right now? They're just beat up, and we don't know where Steph's coming back. What, what's your gut feeling on where they are and how what they will be when, when it's time? I, I just think the multiple trips to the finals are, are beating them up, mm. you know. But they do have KD. You know, K can they win it without KD? Can they win the title without KD? If no never, stiff, never, no, not not now, not not this year, not beat up, not not with not with Curry's injury. And you got to remember the strength of Gold State's mm -hmm. teams uh, the last couple of years has been their bench, mm -hmm. uh, their depth. You know, they miss Barbosa, you know, a guy that can come in and get ten to fifteen mm -hmm. points a game. Uh, they miss, I mean, Bogut to some some degree mm -hmm. you know, was a good facilitator out of their post uh, with their split game offense. Um, and, and, and Livingston, Livingston, uh, he hasn't had the year that he, he's had. Iguodala hasn't had the year yeah, that he's Iguodala had prior. You year. know, maybe he's waiting to the playoffs to yeah. turn it up. But right now, they're counting on young guys that have inexperience. Yeah, um, we gotta leave it there. Jason is sticking Ooh. around. No mercy. Lonzo Ball's rookie season has been under the microscope. He's averaging 10 points, seven rebounds, and seven assists, but he's shooting just 35% from the field and 44% from the free throw line. Back in November, Lonzo became the youngest player ever to record a triple-double in a loss to Jason Terry's Bucks. And Jason is still with us. What have you seen from Lonzo mm. this year? Uh, I've seen everything that I thought he would be. You know, I thought he would shoot a little better than he did, but, uh, you know, as far as being a facilitator, making the play before the play. He sees all that. that that's God's gift to him. Um, is he Jason Kidd? That's the comparison he always gets. I, I just don't think so. Uh, there's something missing there. Uh, his competitive edge is just not quite there yet, you know, but, but can it get there? I, I believe so. He has a tremendous upside uh, just because of his, his, his basketball IQ and the way he plays the game. So I think he just needs to fine tune his outside shot and, uh, and then get some more, go get him. You know, drink some Henny, yeah. Henny, Henny. Mm -hmm. what, LeVar, LeVar got some Henny in his What, what about, so if you don't think you're going to be Jason Kidd, what about Magic? Think he'd be Magic? Who? Magic. <laughs> I mean, the guy across from me said he could be Magic. I did not say that. Why do you keep saying I'll I said that? Say, you put that lies in like my mouth. I didn't say that. <laughs> I never said that. That's Nobody crazy. can be Magic. But, but or but, J. Kidd, matter of uh, fact. I, let me go on record. But here's the, the, my, my thing is, is that, yeah, I agree with you. He needs to be more aggressive. Yeah. But. Why does he keep shooting this amount of threes? Over his last eight games, he's 8 of 54 from the three. Now, Jason Kidd, now he's shooting 30% from the three-point line. Mm. Jason Kidd, as a rookie, shot 29.3. But he was only taking two a game. Right. Lonzo is taking five, almost six threes a game. Yeah, well, that's Luke Walton's system uh, for them to chunk up threes at, a, at an alarming rate. But for Lonzo, Lonzo, you got to remember, this ain't the backyard. You need to get out there in the Staples Center and get your reps up on that NBA court. Not UCLA court where he no. shot. Because mm -hmm. you know he shot 41% in college. Yeah. Where'd you hear that? Somebody told me he shot 41% in college. <laughs> how did that, did that, yeah. well, how did, how did shoot? That's not a good percentage in college when mm. you, the line is what? Yeah, two feet two closer. Two feet closer. Yeah. Huh. That, that's not a good but, percentage. But, ooh, Shannon conveniently ooh. sweeps under the carpet the fact that over a 16 game streak around the All-Star break, Lonzo Ball made 56% of his threes over 16 games. He was just crazy hot. For that stretch, he was the number one three-point shooter in all of basketball. So you saw he could be that, and then the roller coaster rolls down like this, and now he's been the worst over the last, whatever it's been, eight games. But back in November when he visited Milwaukee, he went 19 points, 12 rebounds, and 13 assists. And Jason Kidd made a tactical error because he did not play Jason Terry one lick in that game.
Damn mm -hmm. Because Jason Terry might have been able to slow down this juggernaut that was Lonzo Ball's triple double on that that night. But right? see the look he had in his eye that night, because mm -hmm. I got to see it all, man. I was on that bench yeah. a long time, like you said. <laughs> uh, he, he was going to get it. Like he yeah. literally every time he touched it, he was putting pressure on the defense. Maybe it was for, uh, for Jason Kidd's that, sake. That's yeah. what I'm trying to yeah. tell you. He, yeah. he he was he looked over there, he heard the comparisons, and he had something to prove. So yeah. maybe if he can channel that, you know, in the off season this year. Uh, mm. Getting that gym, he got to stay in the gym though. It got to be mm. two of that. But that just, jumper's funky. But but here's the thing though: the th if he was a shooter or a scorer, I would say continue continue to shoot. But he's a facilitator, right. and he's shooting shots as if he's a scorer. And if he sees one goes in, the basket's going to open up. Of the 101 players that's taken at least 253, mm. he's 99th. Mm. He's in front of Russell Westbrook and Dennis Schroeder. Mm. That's what that, that's where he is. 50 games. So you, Skip, see, Skip like to do sample size, like right. 16 games. Right. So I'm going to give you 50. Mm. That, is that a big sample size? 50. Mm. 50. Mm. And that's where he is, Skip, shooting 30% from the three. Did you know he – Skip, did you see they, they fouled him the other night against Memphis? Mm -hmm. In the fourth quarter, who did they foul on purpose? Can you tell the people – They needed to foul somebody. Okay, okay, okay. They were just lucky he got the ball. No, 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 okay, okay, okay. But, again, he would be the obvious choice to foul. So, but the people that, yeah. that don't have but the NBA But they weren't doing pass. hack Alonzo. No. They just had to foul somebody. For the people yeah. at home that doesn't have NBA yeah. league pass, yeah. can you tell them what happened when Alonzo went to the free throw line to shoot the two free throws? It was pathetic. But I've been telling you it's pathetic, and I, I'll tell Jason Terry right now – the problem I see is not the three-point shot, which he shoots sideways. It's the free throw because he tries to go conventional at the free throw line, and he's got no idea where it's going. Changing it up. Yeah. yeah see, that's you, too much. you either got to do one or the other. You, you know, it's, it's he, a shot or it's not a but shot. But let me ask you a know? question. Mm -hmm. How does he get that shot off if someone's guarding him? coming across his body. How does he get it off? Well, it's just going to be contested. It's going to be tough. Mm. But the only way he can do it is through repetition. That's the only thing. I mean, mm. repetition, better shot selection mm -hmm. will make his percentage go up. And I think for him, again, it's confidence. It's all about confidence. But again, don't force shots. When you're forcing it now and you're shooting a bad percentage, you just keep going down. So, Shannon, can you tell the people yeah. what Lonzo's line was uh, on Saturday night at Memphis? Uh, uh, he, I mean, he had like he, 18, what, he had 16? He had, no, he had 12, 8, Eight. and 10. Well, that's kind of close to a triple-double, yeah, right? Yeah, So there he goes again. So he leads the Lakers, obviously, in assists, and he leads them in steals, and he leads the Lakers, believe it or not, in defensive rebounding, which is pretty great, right, for a point guard? Well, at his position, he's going to be judged on win. Yeah. You, you okay. can throw the stats out. I mean, right. unless he's Russell Westbrook and he's triple-double every night, mm -hmm. he's going to be judged on wins. And they will. Young, and they won't be winning uh, mm -hmm. anytime soon. Anytime. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, like, yeah. Are you talking about years or, or weeks? Uh, like uh, Friday night. I'm gonna <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that stat. You said Lonzo had, what do you have? 12, 8, and 10. Um, I'm looking over there. I'm trying to see what uh, Kuzma and uh, – Julius Randle had. Really Julius Randle had another. Hold up, what'd you say about Kuzma? I like Kuzma. Mm. Uh, now see, mm. he plays with that dog in. What about Jay? What about Drew Randle? Oh, he's a Dallas boy. Mm -hmm. he, used to, he used to sit on court side at the Maverick game. I've been watching him a long time. Mm. Give it, it folks. Good player. Get a big bag. Yeah, yeah, give it to him. Bucks might be in for it on oh. Friday night. You mm. know. This team's they, rolling. They're, they're rolling. They, mm. they're, they're the highest tempo team in yeah, the league they right are. now. They play fast. Play fast. That's, that's right. That's that's right. Get right. them freak. Hey. Get him free. Nobody is faster with the ball in his hands going up court than Lonzo Ball. Well, his three he can his fly. Ten steps is, is 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 freaks too. Yeah. So I will take the freak any day. Mm. He's ain't gonna be. And Bledsoe, don't forget about Bledsoe. Bledsoe, I know. Yeah. And Jesse ain't gonna be sitting up in that short porch. Huh? Kick it to me, freak. Yeah. Huh. Get the freak on. Yeah. KCP, he can shoot it. He can play a little defense. Oh yeah, he's tough. He's yeah. tough. Huh. Oh, by T plays though, man. Yeah. I like to play against him one more time, man. My, oh, the man injured. The protege. man got an injured hip. He do. But you don't feel bad, huh? Taking advantage That's of it. That's why I want him to come out this. <laughs> you know, that's the only way I can get him nowadays. Mm. So hold up, how tall is Isaiah for real? Five six. No, nah, uh, uh, bull job is that? How tall? <laughs> five nah, he's about five eight, five 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 eight and a half, five nine. Mm. And that, and, and, but that's why it's so impressive what he does. I mean, at that size in this league. But healthy. Look at they, even some, not healthy though. He's had some great but, but games. With Skip, the they, someone had they had a stat and they had like what he averages in Brad Stevens' system, and mm -hmm. then everywhere he's been without Brad Stevens, it's 26, like it's twenty and six career though. 
Twenty and six. You, you know what? He's 26 had some career. bust out performances for yeah. the Lakers. He's had some big nights. But, but I'm telling you, off the bench or in the starting lineup, Isaiah Thomas is twenty and six. What is that worth to you? And that's what the NBA team is going to have to decide here this summer. Whoa, whoa, no, no. He said he's not a bench player. Well, it just depends where you want to go. They give him hundred million. <laughs> you gonna come off the bench? Mm. No, he ain't getting hundred million. You don't think he gonna get the hundred million? Mm. 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 Twenty and six. At five eight, nah. Now he was six eight. Yeah, they gave him that. Mm. Cause they gave it to Otto Porter. They gave it to Crab. They gave it to Evan Turner. Otto Porter, Junior. Crab, Junior, Junior. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and who? Evan Turner. And come on. I'm just telling you. Isaiah Thomas is. An you can't all-star. coach height. How you build? Your, let me ask you a question. How you build your team around a five eight guy? We not. We, they not building around Porter either. Yeah, they Porter gave him hundred got- million. Give my somebody, man they his gonna money. Somebody. Give that man his money, man. They gonna give him some money. They gonna give about eight mil a year. Eight mm. mil for an all-star? 26. I'm just, I'm just, it ain't my money, but I'm just mm. saying what they're going to do to it. So, bottom line, can Alonzo Ball be a perennial all-star in this league? In the Western Conference? Mm. Well, it's going to yeah. be tough. It's going to be tough. And they got to win. Mm. They got to win. So. Hold on. Are they going to trade Steph Curry, James Harden? Right. Uh, uh, what are they going to do with Dame Lillard? West what are they going to do with Russ? So, wait, what, I mean. Tough. I'm t- I played in the West for years. And it's tough. It's just hard. As a guard in the Western And Catholic, then Book. What you going to do with it's, Book? It's going to be. Devin Booker. You were the sixth man Six of the year. Sixth man of the year. Mm-hmm. Where was that at? In uh, Dallas. Dallas, that's mm-hmm. right. That was that. All those Dallas. guys in, in, in Denver that can let the ball fly. Now, he might. I mean, look, he's going to be a fan favorite, so he mm-hmm. might. Yeah. He might. But as far as being selected by the coaches, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. there's too many guys. Skip. Well, let's mm-hmm. not forget, he's a rookie, and the big part of his game right now is struggling is shooting, and a lot of that has to do with fatigue. Mm-hmm. He played 36 games at UCLA last year. He's already paid, played 14 more. It'll be 24 his by the end of the season. can't nobody run like his son. You remember his he... dad said a lot of Okay, things. his dad said a lot of things. No, he, he told Kentucky. We're, we're talking about reality Skip, right what now. what he said about Kentucky? They better not try to run with my boy, because nobody <laughs> oh, could run with my boy. Fox tore him up that night, too. But listen, <laughs> we, go, we ain't going to talk about that. But his bar is high. I mean, he has a tremendous upside, and that's what all these NBA scouts and mm-hmm. – what, what, say say, that's what okay, what, what do you think his ceiling is? How many points a night? Mm. 15, 16? Yeah, about 15. 15, 10 assists. Hmm. He averaged 15 to 10. So you realize That's pretty good. That's, that's all-star the level. Man's, the man sitting across from me says he's a bust. I, yep. That's not what I mean. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> he said he was a bust. Skip bust. Skip thinks. Write him off. Bust. You either, bu- you either, you either uh, magic or you're a bust. Mm. I said he's a. I said he can be a good to very good player. Mm. I didn't see transcendent. Mm. I didn't see LeBron. I don't see Steph. I don't see KD at his position. Well, Steph, we didn't see Steph when he was first no. year or two early. Right? Yeah. We couldn't mm. see it. We didn't know he could shoot from half court like that and break mm. ankles like he does. So I mean, go look kid, at Jason Kidd's kid rookie better. stats. He, he just said stop comparing him to Jason I, Kidd. I, I, I understand, but he's just saying he Jason Kidd. You want to talk about having the dog in you? He has right. like the all time dog. dog in him. Oak Town, yeah. not backyard ball. Yeah, that, 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 that's that's <laughs> that's Oak Town. Dame Lillard. Mm. You right. see those see those guys? Just a different breed. Mm-hmm. Well, that that is and he has to get his ball body. Right? Well, ball got to do, got to take it back That's down to confidence because Chino Hill. You know what? He's got to get what? his ball body. He's gotta, like he's his big brother Lamelo. He he's got to agree. put on some weight. He's yeah, he got to. Well, he got to go back to confidence and get out of Chino Hill. Yeah, get up out of Because Dave yeah. Lillard, yeah. all the all them old town boys. Thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate having you in. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Joy Taylor. We're back again tomorrow morning at 9:30 Eastern. We'll see you then. Fox Sports One. Of one, of one, of one.